Hello everybody. My name is Tiffany Almeida and I'm with Pretty in Paper Crafts. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I go live every Sunday morning for fabulous projects using Stampin' Up! product. Today is no exception. I cannot wait to show you the adorable little treats that I'll be making today. Um, and they were featured at my craft fair. So it is craft fair season. So I'll be telling you guys about that. Okay, so here is my code for October. As you guys always know, I have a code every month that um, includes a free gift. So if you place an order with me this month, you can get my free gift. Um, my free gift this month is Shimmery Crystal Effects. So using this code, placing a $50 order gets you the Shimmery Crystal Effects. If you place a $30 order, you get my make and takes from that week. So this week are my adorable little treat boxes. Um, so that is a $30 order, you get these free. If you bump it to $50, you get these and my shimmery crystal effects. So very fun, um, always an uh, awesome thing to take advantage of. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put this up out of the way here. These are my adorable treat boxes, and I wanna to talk to you a little bit about why I'm doing this, this class and what kind of um, brought it all on, okay? So, bear with me here a second. If you have ever done a craft fair, um, and you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and you are trying to find new customers, do not go to a craft fair with just projects to sell. Um, and this is training that I got right from Erica and Rhonda, okay? So they, they know what they're talking about. So I never go into a craft fair with just product to sell. That's never my goal. I, I make things to draw people in. Um, I, I do celebrate the sales. I hopefully make up the cost of the booth. But my ultimate goal is to get new customers. And to get new customers, I have to get people in my studio stamping with me. So I always have classes and things to advertise to get people there. I also have and I don't have one here to show you, but I also have a free class pass with my business card on one side, and on the other side is a free class pass. So I am always inviting people to come try out a class for free. So this is the class I designed for those new potential customers. I'll also offer it to all my current customers so we can have a fun time making these cute little treat boxes. But this class will be free for those no, new people that wanna come try out stamping. This is mostly punch art, it's pretty easy. There's only one or two things that we need to stamp on these things. So I think it will be a good beginner class and also they're so dang cute, they draw people in. So never go to a craft fair um, without a class on display, a sign up, a free class to invite people to, whether it be simple stamping or the cute little treat boxes or whatever it's gonna be, don't go into a craft fair without one. Um, and so that was my ultimate goal. I think I've gotten, I've got a couple people coming to my class. They're really excited. Um, and I gave out a couple catalogs. And so really that is my ultimate goal. So yes, so Janie, they get to come and make these four treat boxes for free. All it's really costing me is some embellishments and paper. And hopefully what they'll do is end up placing an order or coming back for another class um, and just realizing how fun that stamping can be. That's the goal, right? So a little bit of cardstock to convince somebody who maybe never has stamped into somebody who maybe wants to do this again or will host a private party or do something um, where I can find more customers. So um, a free class could just be simple cards too. It doesn't have to be treat boxes, but this was just seemed really simple to me that I could, I could easily do that. Okay. So that's kind of the backstory behind the treat boxes. I am gonna be doing this as a real class um, in my home. So those of you that are local, you guys are welcome to join me on November 4th. How it will work for current customers, it won't be a free class, but it will be $15 for the class. I will give you those $15 back if you place a $25 order with me. So it's basically free with a $25 order or $15 just to, to make the treat boxes. So that's how a simple stamping class is kind of organized um, where you um, just bring them in for stamping and hopefully, ideally, the goal is that they place an order instead of giving me $15, I get, I get a $25 order from them and I get commission from Stampin' Up! and they get product in their hand and they wanna keep stamping. So that's kind of how that works. 
So um, we're gonna go ahead and kind of go in order of seasons. I didn't do a jack-o'-lantern, which you could easily turn this cute little pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern jack jack if you wanted, or it can be more of a fall theme. Um, the stamp set that I used is the um, Hello Harvest, Hel Harvest Hellos, and it does have a jack-o'-lantern face in there, so you can stamp that. But I just used a little sentiment, hey there, pumpkin. And then the rest of it is just using the Kirby Keepsake Dice. So let's, I'll show you what the Kirby Keepsake Dice look like. These are the new mini Kirby Keepsakes. I didn't even get the stamp set with this with these dies, you guys. It comes in a bundle with the stamp set, but I just got the um, these, these dies. And I absolutely love these cute little tags that come with it. There's um, five tags and two snowflake shapes, so there must be a snowflake stamp um, in the set, and then these two little sprigs. So um, this is what, and the other thing I liked is that it's mini, and so it's all one piece. The larger Kirby keepsake die that we used to, that Stampin' Up! used to have was two pieces. So you'd cut two out, glue them together, and then put it together. This is just one piece, and it's absolutely awesome. So um, this pumpkin I actually cased from Rachel Tessman. Um, you guys know who Rachel is. She's super talented, amazing, amazing demonstrator. And I cased her design, which I thought was super cute because she used the heart, this little stitched heart little tag. Um, I still have mine too, Janie. I still have the large curvy keepsake die. I couldn't get rid of it. But she used the heart to create this cute little leaf. And so I'm going to show you that. And then I stamped the sentiment in this oval. So we're going to cut these pieces out and we're going to cut the pumpkin out. Um, using pa uh, pumpkin pie cardstock. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I have some shaded spruce. This is the color green I'm using for my little heart. I have pumpkin pie cardstock. That will be what we're cutting out the um, curvy keepsake in. And I need a little piece of crumb cake for my tag. So I've got all kinds of fun scraps going on and we're going to cut those out real quick here. So I'm going to get my big shot. So we're going to cut this piece of pumpkin pie. And I always put the crank on the wrong side. So crank that. Okay, so it cuts this little piece out. And then we need to do our heart and our little stitched oval. Scraps are the best, right, Janie? You don't get rid of any scraps. Okay. All right, so we've got our two little things. And then um, I'll show you how we're gonna make our little filigree or the little vines of the pumpkin. I don't know what it's called little vines. Okay, so here's our little curvy keepsake template or our little piece that we're gonna make. And it has these little pieces, you just pop them out and throw them away. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I am going to sponge with early espresso ink to get that kind of um, distressed look. Oh, and then one other thing I did, I embossed my um, pumpkin pie cardstock with the Subtles embossing folder. And this just gives it some texture, makes it kind of look more realistic, I think. Um, so you'll definitely want to take the time to do that as well. This is a um, dynamic embossing folder, so it's a little bit thicker. So this is the old version of the embossing folder. Now I've got three different versions of embossing folders I have to keep track of. Does anybody else feel my pain? Like I get it's a whole transition thing, but it's kind of hard to keep track of all those different little pieces. Okay, so now we have this adorable kind of distressed um, pumpkin pie cardstock, and I'm just folding along these score lines, these four score lines in the center. This is the bottom of the project, right? And then you're gonna take your bone folder, and this is a really important step. Don't skip this step. You're gonna take the bone folder and you're gonna curl out the arms. And you wanna do that for all four sides. This is an important step. I didn't think that, was, that it was gonna be, but it really is. 
And then there is a little score line down on this handle and you'll wanna fold in the opposite direction. So fold out like that because these little pieces here are gonna to pinch together. Now I wanna point out before I close it up that this little curvy keepsake is the perfect size for a little Ferrero Rocher um, chocolate. So you'll close these little things around it and then you're gonna take one edge here, slide the two pieces inside and then there is a little lip on the little handle so you can slide this down until it goes underneath that lip. I have hair stuck to my project. Okay, and then you're gonna do that on this side as well, and voila, you have this cute little pumpkin. Okay, but first we gotta distress it, so I'm gonna open this back up and take the little Ferrero Rocher out, and we're going to distress it with early espresso ink. So I have just a little section of my sponge, my Stampin' Sponge that I cut out. I have my early espresso, and we are just going to brush this along all the edges and even against these folds here. Just every single edge. And this gives that pumpkin kind of a, a less clean look, which I really like. Sponging is amazing. It does so much for a project. So you'll just, again, sponge, sponge everywhere and I just brush it against the edges. Uh-oh. I have not seen my video freeze, but it could be my, um, could be my, my internet. Is anyone help else having that issue? SpongeBob, Janie, it's a SpongeBob. I hope it's not SpongeBob. I don't wanna be a SpongeBob murderer. Okay. So I have sponged my little label, I have sponged my pumpkin. Again, I can put my little Ferrero Rocher candy in there and then I can close it up. So I just love, look how cute this little mini keepsake treat holder is. And you can do all kinds of characters. Just Google, go onto Pinterest or Google mini curvy keepsake and you are gonna find so many cute little characters that you can do with this adorable set. All right, so I'm gonna get my little Hey There stamp Actually, I already have it uh, on a block. Now I just gotta find it. Hey there, pumpkin, which is such a cute sentiment. I love that. Okay. And I'm gonna stamp this right in the center of my little label here. Hopefully it's straight. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and work on our little leaf. This is so cool. You take this little stitched leaf, and or this heart, and we're gonna cut it right up to that circle. See that? And I'm actually, I know, call me crazy, I'm gonna sponge the edges of this too. Because we don't want this to be clean. And we can sponge this with our early espresso. Doesn't matter what color we use. We just kinda run and rough it up a little bit. Okay, we're gonna curl the edges of our leaf with our bone folder. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a glue dot and you're going to kind of push these two together so that we create this kind of little cup. I can only think of it as like a little cup. So glue dots are gonna be the best for this. I'm just gonna put a glue dot right on one side of the heart. So see how there's one glue dot right there? I'm just gonna lay the other one over it like that to create a little cup. And then what I can do is take some, um, some more dimensionals and just put them on the back and glue that down to, our, um, to the top piece. Now be careful when you're gluing this down so that it's on the flap that can still come up so your pumpkin isn't sealed closed for forever. Okay, so there's that. All right, and then what we're gonna do, so now for this little, um, little spirally thing, I don't know what you wanna call that, um, what we need is just a skinny strip of um, shaded spruce cardstock. I have a little piece right here. And we're just gonna trim just a tiny, tiny little bit. And can you guys see I'm using my new trimmer? I'm trying to get used to it still. I have read and watched a lot of people's reviews. And yes, I cut upside down, but I'm gonna switch it for you guys. 
one thing that I absolutely love is that there are these um, tracks. There, there are these things that hold so I can cut tiny pieces of paper and it doesn't slide off, which I absolutely love. So that's one of my favorite things about the new trimmer is that I can cut really thin pieces and they don't go anywhere. Okay, so all I did was cut like one eighth of a like strip. You don't need a very big one. And I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm gonna start curling it. Okay, and then I can take it and wrap it around a pencil. And this is just a little mechanical pencil. And I'm just gonna wrap it around and give it some curl. And just do it tight. You want it to stay, okay? And then you have this cute little curl and you can stretch it out. I'm gonna put a little glue dot on one end. Right here. And I'm gonna kinda stick it underneath my leaf. So that it hangs off the side. How cute is that? Okay, and then for the tag, I'm just gonna use linen thread. And where's my linen thread? There it is. I have linen thread and then I have this little, I'm just gonna loop it through here. Now, the one thing that I'm gonna do, like you could just tie it through the handle and have it there, but that means you have to take the label off to open the box. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie the label through this little slit here so that it doesn't interfere with opening and closing of the box, but it's still in view at the top. So, and I gotta do it the other way. Let me cut this section. Give myself enough to tie a bow. And we are going to string it through. And tie a bow right here at the top. So again, as you're putting these little treat boxes together, just be mindful of where you tie things or glue things down because you want the um, box to still open. And I'll, I'll tell you how I learned that. I learned it the hard way with my little snowman, so I'll show you. So how cute is that? And again, you can make this as big and stretchy or as little and small as you'd like, but what a cute, fun little pumpkin. And how cute, like to give us a little treat um, for your coworkers or as decorations for your Thanksgiving dinner um, or anything like that. How fun is that? Okay, so that's project number one. Again, you can get all of these projects by placing an order with me on my online store of $30. Okay, this little turkey, he also has a little Ferrero Rocher cooking in his oven. Isn't that cute? And so um, I can't remember where I got this idea. I saw a picture again on Pinterest or something and I just cased it. And, um, and I used the little Christmas bulb punch for his little feathers, his beak, his, his little um, wing feathers. So pretty much everything about him is just the Christmas bulb punch. So I'm gonna get that out. And again, we need to cut out a Kirby keepsake in crumb cake. And I have a piece of crumb cake here, and I have my little curvy keepsake die. Okay, so we've got our little curvy keepsake uh, outline, and again, we're gonna sponge um, all the edges with the early espresso ink. All right, so again, we are going to curve those edges. Again, this is a very important step. It makes make putting that curvy keepsake together so much easier. And again, these are things I learned the hard way. So I'm just telling you so that you can have a happier experience than I did. I have another little Ferrero Rocher cook, uh, candy, chocolate, whatever. I keep trying to call them cookies and we can just close up our box. And the reason I want this closed when I build my turkey is because I want the head of the turkey to open and I want the tail to 
to be the part that goes in first. So um, in order to do that, rather than me try to keep track, I'm just going to do it like this so I know the face goes here and the tail goes here. All right, so I am going to punch out a bunch of bulbs in different colors. I have four different colors for the bulbs. I have crumb cake for his wings on his arms. And then I have Cajun Craze, Early Espresso, and Mango Melody for his tail. And I just punched three of each. And for the Mango Melody, I need one more for his beak. So this is going to be his beak. Okay, and then three for his Early Espresso. This is called Punch Art. I love Punch Art. I'm all for Punch Art. This turkey is just so cute. Isn't he adorable? Okay, for the wings, I did three on each side. So we need six of the crumb cake for his wings. And see how I punch upside down so I can see what I'm punching? So I've got three and three and three of each of those colors. All right, so the only little time consuming part is I did sponge all the feathers not his beak, but I sponged the feathers and his wings. Okay, so now we've got our little birds and what you can do is you can either use glue dots, which are super easy and fast, which I think I'm going to do, or you can use liquid glue. Um, for his beak, I'm going to actually fold his beak over to kind of form a lip here down at the bottom. And that's the part that I'm gonna glue, this section here is what I'm gonna glue to his face. So put a glue dot on there and glue his beak on there. And then what we will have to do is for his little, I don't know what that is, gobble. What is that called? I always forget. People always tell me and I forget because that is not a, Part of the anatomy of a turkey I usually need to remember. So I'm just going to create his little thing here, whatever you want to call it. I just cut it out. It kind of looks like a raindrop, kind of. Not really. Wet waddle, a waddle. That, I just, is it really, like, a waddle is a type of walk. <laughs> I never think of it as being an anatomy of a turkey, but that is that where we get it from, waddle? So I'm just gonna glue this to the inside of his beak. I'm having all kinds of trouble getting glue everywhere. Should have done a glue dot. So there's his waddle, okay? So we have his waddle. All right, and then we're going to do the eyes. So I got googly eyes for that. These little googly eyes were perfect for his little face. So I'm going to use my little putty, my putty tool, my pick a tool, pick up an eye, and I'm actually going to put a glue dot on the eye. So now that I've got it on there, pick that up and glue his little eye down. Pick up another eye, put it on the glue dot. This is the messy free way of gluing eyes down. Oh, and I kind of want him, I kind of want his eyes close together, not too far apart. So come closer. So there we go. We got his cute little eyes and his little beak. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the tails on. I'm going to use my glue dots for this. You can use um, uh, liquid glue. You just kind of have to hold things a little bit longer. So on the shaded side is where I'm gonna put my glue dot and I'm just gonna start building a fan of feathers around his backside there. So you just want a little bit of the feather showing through. And so I'm just going to put, again, glue dots on the shaded side of the bulb. Just so that. I'm like skipping glue dots. So you can see how I'm just pushing the glue dot down onto my bulb and then I glue the bulb down. And I see some that I missed. I skipped like a whole row. 
Okay, so you've got your cute little tail feathers. How adorable is that? And then for these wings, we'll do what Janie said here and we'll just put a bunch down and then peel them off. Man, this is like assembly line right here. This is awesome. Okay, and actually I shouldn't have put all of them on at the same time, oh well. And on the wings, don't put the um, sponge side down on your glue dot because then you can't see the sponge detail. And I didn't think about that. So my non-sponge side is showing, but that's okay. And I'm putting these in the opposite direction, if you guys can see, going towards the front. So there you go. He has these cute little wings, cute little beak. He's all ready for Thanksgiving. How adorable is that? So cute. Okay. That is project number two. And you can see just how quickly those come together. I love it. Okay. Um, let's do our little elf because he is absolutely adorable. I loved using this stamp, no peeking, to go with our little elf suit. Um, and the project that I saw on Pinterest for the elf suit had some little pendant, little triangle pendants, which you can use with the um, hot air balloon punch. So see on the hot air balloon punch, there's these little triangles. So they did like three triangles, which is really smart. Um, I was looking at my dies and I saw that the dino dies has the, see this? Dino dies has those um, spikes in the back that you cut out individually. And so what I did is I just cut out the dino's spines in real red. So we're gonna do that on this one. So that's kind of how I did it. Um, and there is no right or wrong way, whatever you like. If you don't have the dies, use the punch. If you don't have the punch, use the dies. Uh, however you get there, it's still the same. It'll be super cute at the end, right? So we're gonna cut out our little elf. So we have our pieces for our elf, and thankfully there's no shading on this one. You could shade, but there isn't on this particular one for me. So this is just the mini Kirby keepsake box, just like so. We're gonna put it together, and again, what's the first thing we do? Drill those arms. It makes putting this box together so much easier and things just fit into place a little bit better, I feel like. Thank you so much for sharing. I know you guys hear the bell. I'm using those bells. I love stamping up some new bells. All right, so now that we've put our little guy together, we're gonna put the side that covers the front here. And what I did was I took my little dino cutout and I went on the last spike here and I just went straight up to the edge there. And then you're gonna do the same thing over here. You're gonna go straight up like so. Okay, to just kind of create a little collar. And then you've gotta kind of figure out where to put it so that the two ends hit the side of the shirt, as we're gonna call it, or the box. So we'll get some liquid glue Just a little bit, not a lot. And again, we're just gonna put this up at the top. And just kinda hold it down for a second. It is at a curved angle, so we just gotta let that glue stick, let it do its job. Okay, so there's that piece. Um, the metallic pearls are what I used for the little jingle bells on his collar. These little silver metallic pearls. Now metallic pearls come in gold and silver and I've already used up all my gold ones. So 
So I'm gonna give him silver bells. And I'm just gonna use my piercing tool and I'm gonna put it on every other one. So one there. One here. There and there. So now he's got those cute little silver bells. Okay, so then we're gonna make his little belt. So I'm gonna to kind of turn it sideways so you guys can see. So for the belt, you just need a scrap of basic black and you need a piece of um, the glimmer, silver um, glimmer paper. And we're just gonna do some cutting. So I'm gonna get my trimmer into view here. Okay, so we just need a thin strip of basic black. I'm going to do about um, a quarter of an inch, which is perfect. Okay. My, my blade, my tray is tough to pull up. That's one of my complaints on this. Okay. And then there I'm going to cut at half an inch. So this strip is half an inch by half an inch, so it's just a half inch square, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue this strip across the band, or across the, the belly here. And I'm just gonna do a line of glue across the project and trim off any excess black that I have. Yes, I know it's to hold the paper down, but it's hard to lift it back up. Okay, so there's that. There's that. Okay, and then we're gonna put our little square glimmer piece in the center of the belt. If you guys have ever wondered how to make a belt, you don't cut a square out of the center and so the black can show through or anything like that. You just put a square then you cut another square out of this scrap you have left over. You put glue on it. And you guys are all like, duh, Tiffany, but you know what? I did not know that. And I was like, how do people get that square cut out of the center? So tiny. Yeah, I know. I'm a little slow. It's okay. So there's the little belt. How cute is that? Right? So now we just get to make this adorable tag. And to do that, we're going to use the hashtag Elfie stamp set. This adorable set that I'm using for Blends Club. And I have this little guy on a block. And we're going to stamp him on a piece of Whisper White. And then we'll punch him out of that timeless tag punch. So I'm just going to stamp him in Memento because I'm going to color him with my Stampin' Blends. So we'll just stamp him right here. Okay, and then color him. He's so adorable. So his skin will be ivory, so we'll just color his skin real quick. And then his little hat will be shaded spruce. Just gonna do some outlining. And some of these images are really tiny, so you have to be really careful. Oop, wow, there I went right out of the outside. I need my <laughs> magic eraser, because holy cow, that's what I get for trying to go fast. This is our, um, color lifter. I think of it more as a color pusher. It pushes the color back where it belongs. I'm using pineapple punch to color his hair. We'll do shaded spruce for his shirt. I'm 
like so. The Wonder Lifter. It is a wonder how it lifts, huh? Okay, so there's that. And if your color lifter doesn't push all the color back the first time, it's okay. You might need another coat. It's never going to be exactly perfect, but it sure does do a good job of hiding it a little bit. All right, so then we've got our little stamped image. Now we're going to stamp or punch with the um, timeless punch. So we're going to just punch this out. Look how perfectly this fits here, like a label. Cute. Okay, and then... Let me get these out of the way. I have a Jingle Bell, and I'm gonna get my one eighth inch um, hole punch here. This is retired, but I think it, it keeps going into the um, clearance, so be checking there regularly to see if it's in the clearance. I need linen thread to tie my little bow, and I need a green bell. So the Jinko Bells come in gold, cherry cobbler, and shaded spruce. So three wonderful um, Christmas colors. All right, so what I'm gonna do for mine is this one I did string through the um, lid, so uh, you would have to untie the tag, but I'm gonna do that little trick I showed you guys about stringing it through the slit instead so that you can still open and close the box. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut some of this linen thread, enough to tie a bow. And what I did was I strung both pieces, so I punched the hole through his hat, through that little top part of his hat, because that's where I want the bell to be. So I'm actually gonna string both pieces of this linen thread through the hole, like so. Okay, and then I'm going to string it through just one side, just string one side through the bell. And we're going to tie a knot, like so. And then we're going to tie a bow. Oh, my big fingers are having a hard time with this. There we go. So that look how the bell looks like it's the top of his hat. How cute is that? And then you can trim off the edges. Okay. All right, scissors, behave. So cute. So there's one where the tag is on the handle and here's one where the tag is um, actually inside so you can open it. Cute, right? So there's a the little elf. I love the elf, he's adorable. I just can't get enough of him. Okay, last but not least is our adorable little snowman, um, Don, Don, uh, I don't know Don's last name, but it's um, Don Stamping something. I put it on my blog post. She did a cute little snowman um, using the Kirby Keepsakes and she attached the head using a mini um, clothespin. Now, when I made this, I didn't have clothespins, so I just glued his head to the handle, which you can do, but then you can't open him again. So I recommend putting him his head right on the clothespin, and then you can take the clothespin on and off if you wanna open your treat box. So I'm gonna show you that um, here in a second. So the things you need for the Kirby keepsake for our little snowman, I'm gonna turn him sideways so you can kinda of see him in his full glory there. I've already cut out, because this was one of our card club projects and I had some extras, I already cut out the Whisper White in the Curvy Keepsake. And these are the other little pieces that we need. So I punched out a one and three quarter inch circle. Um, you could also cut something out of the dies if you don't have the one and, three, one and three quarter inch circle. You could just cut out a layering circle. The other thing I did was I cut out the stitched um, square and this is in the curvy keepsakes dies and it is um, this little stitch square right here and this is going to be his top hat so how cool is that you just cut that little piece out for his top hat and then what I did was I punched using this really old you guys remember this old label punch perfect for a top hat one and then for his nose I punched out um, one of those Christmas bulbs 
and I also cut out a sprig using the uh, mini curve ca curvy keepsake dies. So you remember the two sprigs that are in there? Cut that out of old olive. I cut two buttons. These are the flower buttons that are in the arts and crafts dies. So this button in the arts and crafts, you guys know which one it goes with, right? The, it starts with art. So I did this button twice. And then I did two eyes. I just punched two holes out of, um, I think this was the gingerbread set. So I just punched two black holes. Now for his nose, this um, bulb is too big. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and cut from this flat edge here. We're gonna cut to the point in the center to make kind of a carrot shape, like so. Then you have this perfect carrot nose, okay? So I just cut the two sides off of that. All right, so let's go ahead and build his face and then we'll build his body because I don't like to have all these little pieces going around everywhere. I feel like I'm gonna lose them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue our little um, eye pieces on. So we've got his two little eyes. We'll glue his nose. little bit okay then we've got his hat so what I did again for his hat is I just took that little label and I covered the hole so the hat the bottom of the hat is just gonna cover that little hole that gets cut out with the dies so we'll just cover that and he has a perfect little top hat cute right he has melted so cute I may I had this I had this little snowman um, on display, you know, as part of a class that people could come to. And this little girl comes up, look, mommy, look, it's Olaf, it's Olaf. Oops, I put too much glue on here. Don't do that. Don't do what I did. Just do his little top part of his head. I have to clean my hands now. Okay. And so uh, it was just so cute. She's like, look, mom, it's Olaf. I'm like, yeah, it's Olaf. Okay, so the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a smiley face. And I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna go up like so, super easy. And then I'm gonna take a sponge dauber and some pink ink. And I'm gonna just test this real quick. Depending on how pink you want his cheek is how much ink you'll put on. And you'll just dab his little cheek right there. Then he has a pink cheek. Cute, right? This is Flirty Flamingo, or you can use Mango Melody, or you can use whatever pink you want for his little cheek. All right, so now we're gonna put our box together. And again, we're gonna get our bone folder, and we are going to curl his edges, curl these little sides of his body. Now you could even, um, stack these. You could stack more than one curvy keepsake to make a taller snowman. You could have two stacks and then the head if you wanted to do a bigger body. Um, so you could do kinds, all kinds of fun things with um, these curvy keepsakes. So we are going to close up the box. Now, differently than the other ones, this is going to be the front facing. So the, our turkey was this way and our elf was this way, but the snowman's gonna be this way because we want the clip to clip to here, so his head is gonna be facing this way. So we're going to glue our little buttons down. And we'll just do one at a time here, and we'll just start, start at the top. And I tried to fit three buttons in, but I just couldn't. It's not big enough space to do three, but I love these little buttons. And this is the smallest button in the dies. Turned out to be the flowers, which I thought was so cute. What snowman doesn't want flower buttons? Okay, and then like I said, you're just gonna get a little, um, little clip and, oh, this one's kind of a bigger clip, but that's okay, I like it. So you can get a clip here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue dots on the clip and then I'll stick my head to the glue dots, okay? So I'm gonna put glue dots right on the front of the clip. 
And you can get these clothespins anywhere, craft stores or Walmart or pretty much anywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna put the clothespin down on top here. And then I'm gonna stick my snowman's head right on the clip. See that? Okay, so now we're gonna give him a nice little scarf to keep him warm and it's gonna have a little bell on it. I'm using that curly ribbon, which is so cute. It looks like a scarf. Looks like a warm scarf. We're gonna wrap that around him. And tie a bow. Oh, I forgot the bell. Don't forget the bell. Where's my little bells? Oh, there they are. So what we'll do is we'll just string this through and you kind of have to curl the edge up and get it nice and skinny. But Stampin' Up! really made these um, holes on the bells really big this year, so that's good. So they're pretty easy to string through. Now this ribbon is a little bit tougher to string and it does come right out. It, it fluffs up. So I'm just gonna pull it through. And then we'll tie a bow. Okay. And then you have this adorable snowman. Look how cute he is. He looks so happy. So there is the snowman. Can you guys see that? He's got a lighter cheek than the other one. This one I used Mango Melody. This one I used the Flirty Flamingo. And now we're gonna decorate his hat. And I don't know what I did with all the little pieces. Oh, there they are. Here's the sprig. So we'll put the sprig down first. And then the heart I punched out of the Dog Builder Punch. So the sprig goes down first. And then I took a heart which I lost the little one, but I have a whole bag full of hearts. These would be fun to make for a craft fair too. Hold a little Ferrero Rocher chocolate. So I'm gonna put a heart. This is a cherry cobbler heart. And I'm gonna cover the sprig like so. So cute. All right, you guys, so there's my four little treats. My four favorite little treats for the coming holidays. I think they are absolutely adorable. Again, all of these projects can be yours if you place a $30 order with me on my online store using this code this week. You have till Friday. You can also get my shimmery effects if you up your order to $50. And then you would have all the things to make four adorable treats. All right, bye guys. Have a good week. Thanks for watching.